what has your attention? And what are you looking at? And what is occupying the stage of your mind? What do you spend time thinking about, mulling over, reading, researching, and giving your consideration to? Is it what's in the news, the headlines, the matters that news commentators are discussing? Are these the issues and matters that consume your time and attention? Cell phones, laptops, iPads, and video games all transport people into their own private worlds. People are therefore often oblivious to, or at least highly distracted from the intermediate world that they are physically in at the moment, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling along. Top issues, events, tragedies, and celebrities often grab and hold the attention of many in our culture, world, and even church. Electronic devices, gadgets, and the desire to get the latest versions often seem to command and control much of our time and lives. In Luke 10, verse 38 through 42, we find an interesting story in the life of Jesus about a distracted person. He is visiting in the home of Martha and Mary. As many would expect, Martha is busy carrying out the responsibilities that a hostess was expected to do for guests, probably cooking, cleaning, and the like. However, her sister Mary was sitting down at the feet of Jesus, listening to him. Who was distracted, Martha or Mary? The word of God gives the answer very plainly. It says in verse 40, but Martha was distracted. To be distracted is to have your mind and attention pulled away from the more important thing or things. The scripture in this passage lets us know that Mary is acting more wisely than Martha. Mary is commended, not Martha. Mary is acting wisely as she makes it her priority to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his word. But Martha was distracted. In other words, Martha's mind and thinking were not focused on the more important thing in this situation, which was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him, learning from him, and simply spending time with him. A simple yet profound truth found in this humble yet powerful story is spending time with God and seeking his wisdom is to be one of the high priorities of life for a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. But once we are saved, our most important goal in life is to faithfully and diligently run after God. Just how do we do that? You run after God by sitting at his feet every day. We sit at the feet of Jesus by living a lifestyle of spending time daily reading and meditating on the Bible, by spending significant time in prayer and by obeying what we read and receive from God. Knowing and following him is living a lifestyle of faith. We are told in Hebrews 11 verse 6, but without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Why don't we seek to be wise like Mary? Why don't we make it a goal to have a lifestyle of sitting at the feet of Jesus daily? Let's run after him by sitting at his feet, listening, learning, growing, and following. If we are not careful, we can allow the world to set our agenda and priorities as we listen to what it decides are the headlines of our times. If we focus and concentrate on what the world is focused on, we can miss God's voice, his priorities, and his agenda. We can be living distracted lives and not even realize it. As we live at the feet of Jesus, we will not live a distracted life. We will not live a life full of wasting time reading and learning about men who want to be women and people who want to change colors, and what celebrities are wearing at any given event, etc. Instead, at Jesus' feet, he can teach us what is important and what is not. He can teach us what is true and what is false. There, he can teach us what is right and what is wrong. There, we can learn about what is in the heart of God and know that staying focused on God's ordained priorities is just not important, it's crucial. Seek to develop spiritual habits that help you focus on God. Make them a part of your daily life. Uh, read maybe three chapters in the Bible every day. Pray daily, praying the Lord's Prayer, praying the Ten Commandments, and praying about important issues in life. Uh, obey what you learn from the Word of God. Spiritual habits help you keep your focus on Christ and the will of the Lord. You also have to watch out for weapons of mass distraction. Uh, they seem to be everywhere, and I know everyone knows what I'm talking about. Learn to focus on your time, energy, and concern on what is important. Spend time every day running after the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't waste your time. A wasted time is indeed a wasted life. Sit at the feet of Jesus and let him set your agenda rather than the world. 
I want to ask you, who are you when you pray? Uh, um, to me, a man is what he is on his knees before God and nothing more. When he is finished with all the world has to offer, finished with everything he thought would satisfy him, and finished with every attempt to gain favor with God. Prayer is when the Christian has nothing, and nothing left to do but fall on his face before his Father, with everything laid bare, trusting in his mercy. Prayer is an act of faith. What does the soul of a Christian look like in rare, sincere prayer? It's sinful. Even a Christian's prayers are imperfect and tainted by sin. We cannot fully escape selfish motives or misplaced desires when we pray, but that's why we need Christ. As we pray, he acts as our high priest, offering up our prayers purified by his death, Revelation 8.4. A praying Christian is sinful, but his Christ is righteous. Our prayers can be fickle. A Christian in prayer is easily distracted. The cares of this world and the wickedness of his heart set themselves against this practice. He can be in earnest prayer one moment and then be hardly praying all the next, with his mind turned by some passing thought or distraction. It isn't a matter of trying to concentrate, it's a matter of being human. Christ stands continuously praying for the Christian, and his mind never strays, Hebrews 7.25. A praying Christian is fickle, but his Christ is faithful. Our prayer is helpless. When a Christian prays, he puts himself in a position of helplessness. There's nothing in himself that he can trust or look to for strength. He recognizes this sin as imperfections in his heart and refuses to claim that he can fix them himself. There is nothing for him to lean on for support, nothing behind which he can hide, and nothing to which he can find inside himself for strength. The Christian in prayer is helpless, but Christ is mighty to save. Our prayer is starving. A Christian prays for one reason, he is needy. His soul is made to be satisfied and nothing can satisfy it. Whether he feels it or not, he is in constant state of starvation apart from the intimacy of God. Not only will nothing in this world satisfy his desires, but also nothing here is equipped to meet his needs. His soul needs rest from the everyday activity of life, and the longest vacation or deepest sleep can't give him that rest. His soul needs to be cleansed from guilt, and all the good works in the world that would only soil him more. His soul needs rest from the everyday activity of life, and the longest vacation or deepest sleep can't give him that rest. His soul needs to be cleansed from guilt, and all the good works in the world would only soil him more. His soul needs to be released from the power of sin, and all the positive thinking, self-help books he could read would only give him false hope. The Christian prays because he is starving, and his Christ is all-sufficient, able to meet all of his needs and grant him every desire of his heart. Prayer is trusting. The Christian who prays is placing his trust in something outside himself. He knows his heart is deceitful and desperately wicked, Jeremiah 17, 9, and he dares not to trust it. He will not place his trust in anything he has done, knowing that his most righteous works are filthy rags, Isaiah 64, 6. He can't place trust in yesterday's grace. He needs God now. There is only one place where he can trust and satisfy his rest. The praying Christian places his trust in the arms of a trustworthy Christ. The Christian who prays is moving from a shallow to shining, from despair to divine, and from worry to willing. The Christian who prays shows a willingness to trust, hear, and obey. Several people that I know fight every day against evil with an unwavering commitment to bring dark to light and expose the evil infestation of our world today. Uh, so I'm not saying put down your sword. I am reminding you to take time each day and replenish your spirit, regenerate your fight, and power up your mind. Do not become cornered in the devil's playground. Without God, our lives are hopeless, idle, and impractical. Again, thank you for listening. As most of you know, we are delisted from YouTube search and suggested channels, I guess based on our content. And nevertheless, we are not monetized. If you do wish to donate to our channel, please visit patreon.com forward slash 316 exposure. Uh, donations can be whatever amount you like, even as little as $1 per month. Uh, again, I, I really appreciate your support. And until next time, God bless you and your families. Thank you.